Hello, guys. How are you? How are you doing? Doing good? Fantastic. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, before I start, I would like to thank uh, Bahmed for, for giving me the honor of speaking in front of this stage, the beautiful stage, and being the first speaker. That's an honor for me. Thank you so much, Bahmed. You're the man. Um, yeah. So, guys, do we have readers here? You know, they say that uh, readers are leaders. So, do we have readers? Do you guys like reading books? Okay, fantastic. Novels, maybe? Do you like novels? You don't like novels. Okay, who like novels? Cool, okay. So, just a question, quick question. Who do you think is the nationality? What do you think is the nationality of the author of the first novel ever written in the history of humanity? Like the first author who thought about writing a novel and actually wrote it. Who do you think is his nationality? Guys, come on. No answers? Just guess any nationality. British, okay. Okay, yeah. So um, I know that a lot of people don't know this, but I really wanted to start with this because this information is so dear to me and uh, our history is so dear to me. And as a new generation, we need to know about our history. So the first writer who thought about writing a novel, a novel is a riwaya, is actually an Algerian, okay? Did you know that? Do you know that Algerians uh, wrote the first novel ever? You didn't know that? Okay, so this is the novel. The first one who wrote a novel was an Algerian. It was in the media at the time. And uh, the novel's title is uh, The Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis, and it was written by uh, Apollius. His name is Apollius. He used to live in a small village in uh, Madur. At that time, the name of the village was Madur, and now it's um, Deurush. Do you know Deurush? It's in Sukahras. He's an Algerian, yeah, people from Sukahras, yeah. So in Deurush, he was from Deurush, and he wrote the first novel ever. Can you imagine this? Yeah, and he was born in a small village. So you guys, you have no excuses for those who are saying that, you know, we're coming from small villages, we cannot do anything, uh, you know, we did not get the best education. You have no excuse, okay? Because even people from small villages can do a lot of things. And actually, people from small villages do the best things ever, you know, because they have the motivation. So why I'm telling you this, why I'm starting with, with a novel? First of all, because we need to know about what our history. And the second thing is that, the novel's uh, title is Metamorphosis. You know what does it mean, Metamorphosis? Okay, so Metamorphosis is a Greek word, and it means transformation from state A to state B, like complete transformation, okay? And currently in our country, we're living a transformation. We're living it. And we are, our generation, we are the actors of this transformation. This transformation is not going to happen without us, okay? And this is why I'm shedding the light on that. I'm shedding the light on the importance of transforming this country to a better country, making a positive impact. Um, so yeah, this is it. This is the uh, the uh, the beginning. So um, you know, before before I come to this uh, to this event it was last week, uh, and I was in the bus station. I was sitting there, and I was thinking about how I'm gonna how I'm gonna what is the thing that I'm gonna deliver to you? I'm gonna talk to you about entrepreneurship and uh, entrepreneurship mindset. And while sitting on the, uh, uh, on, the, on the bus station waiting for the bus, I noticed there was some, someone in front of me and I, I recognized him. I, I said, yeah, I know this man, I know him. So I went directly to him, I went directly to this man. And at my surprise, when I arrived, I was so surprised, I was shocked actually. Can you imagine who was there waiting in the, in the bus station? It was actually Elon Musk. You know Elon Musk? Okay, so Elon Musk is like the, uh, uh, one of the most famous entrepreneurs in the world right now. He's the CEO of Tesla and SpaceX. Yeah, he's like so famous. And he's one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world. And uh, once I arrived, I was like, Elon Musk, 
the hell are you doing here, man? I mean, I thought, I thought you were from the United States. What are you doing here in Algeria? And sitting in the bus station and I was so surprised. I was like, what are you doing here, man? And it was like, um, you know, there was this beautiful event called Jadwa Talk. And I really love this kind of event. So guys, I, I want you, I want you to applaud for, for Bahamad because, because he organized this event. So, so Elon Musk said, uh, I just want to participate in this beautiful event called Jadwa Talk, and uh, I'm really interested in entrepreneurship. And then I said, you know what? I will be delivering a speech about entrepreneurship, and I would love to ask you some questions, if you don't mind. He was like, yeah, of course, tell me about it. I was like, Elon Musk, first of all, you're a genius. You're one of the most successful entrepreneurs ever. So why bother coming to an entrepreneurship event like you're already successful you're a genius then he tell me that you don't have to be a genius to be a successful entrepreneur did you get it you don't have to be the smartest in the world you don't have to have superpowers or to be rich or i don't know you just need to be you okay this is what he told me and then i was like uh, okay so Elon Musk, you know, okay, so you're, you're successful, you're, you have your own business, and you know, Algeria now we're passing through a, um, a transformation, as I said, it's metamorphosis. So how do you think I can be a successful entrepreneur? What, what are the steps to start my own project and be a successful entrepreneur? And then he said, Hussam, it's simple. You know, I passed a couple of days here in Algeria and I noticed that you guys are rich. You guys are rich. I mean, your country is so big, it's the biggest in Algeria. You have oil, you have gas, you have uh, gold, you have minerals. You, you guys have it. Like the climate is perfect. So you, you are rich. You just need to know how to use this richness. And then I was like, uh, do you think that, I mean, we are rich, I know that, but how do you think we should do that? And then he said that one of the things that I noticed, which is uh, your trump card or the most important thing in your country is that 70% of your population is under the age of 35. It means that you guys, 70% uh, of your population are young people. So this is, this is the wealth of your country. It's not gas, it's not oil, it's not gold. It's you guys, you see? And it's, it's like, it's true. I mean, if we, do, if we have gold and we have all this wealth, but we don't have human beings, then it's pointless. If we don't invest in human beings, then we're not going to succeed. We're not going to evolve. What do you think, guys? And, and uh, after that, I was like, yeah, yeah you're true. That, that, that's so true. But um, how, how do you think we can do that? How can we invest in human beings? And then he said that, you know, what is, what is, what is a country? A country is like a land, as Algeria, a land. And there are people, which are us, 40, uh, 45 millions, and there is, there is a government. And uh, people are living with each other and they interact with each other. And this interaction, some kind of create problems. You know, when there are a lot of people, and there's a lot of interaction, there are some problems. So all what we have to do as a generation is to spot a problem. Just one problem. Every single one of you, every single Algerian should spot one problem and propose a solution. Did you get it? One problem and propose a solution to this problem, whether it's a product or a service, okay? So I'm gonna repeat this. Human beings, they interact with each other, and we Algerians are interacting with each other all the time. And this interaction gonna lead to problems. There are gonna be some problems, there are gonna be some needs, okay? And in order to satisfy these needs, we need a product or a service. As, as a new generation and as people who want to succeed in our country and make a positive impact, economical impact, and make our economy better, we need to spot one problem and propose a solution, okay? This is what Elon Musk told me, okay? And then I was like, okay, yeah, I mean, I mean that's good. After that, what do you think I should do? I'm, I just spot a problem and I'm proposing a solution. I'm, I, I want money, bro, I want to make money. And then he said, after that, you need to volunteer. That's what he said. You need to volunteer using this, this, uh, this solution. It means you spot a problem, 
you bring a solution and then you volunteer to your society. You serve your society using this solution. And then I started laughing. It was like, Elon Musk, come on, bro. I mean, I want to be rich. I want to make money. Are you serious? Like, you're joking me right now? Are you saying that I, I'm going to do this for free? And this is, guys, the, the thing that we don't do it here in Algeria. Things for free. You need to start investing in this solution for free. This is the first step. You cannot make money directly, okay? You need to invest in the solution uh, by volunteering. And with time, you will gain experience. You will, uh, your, your network is going to be uh, bigger and stronger. And with time, you will, you will go to the next step, which is uh, lucrative investment. After that, you can invest and make money out of this. So, so these are some, some ideas about how to start a project, uh, which is the fruit of my, my discussion with, uh, with Elon Musk. And, and suddenly I want to ask him another question and then he disappeared. Just suddenly disappeared. And then I just came here, guys, and start telling you the story. And uh, it, I mean, it's, it's really important to talk about that. And it's a really important as a new generation, as, as now generation to start our own project. To, um, to start a project and make our country a better country. And there's just one thing that I want to um, add to what Elon Musk told me, which is the first step is not to spot a problem. The first step that I believe you guys should start with is um, changing your surroundings. Because I believe, uh, I'm, I'm interacting with, with a lot of Algerians every day, and I believe that you guys are, are so creative. I believe that our generation is so unique. It's so different than the previous generations. It's so different from our ancestors. And the only thing that we are facing right now is the negativity of society, the negativity of people around us. So I believe that every single one of you guys have something to offer to our society. You have something, you have a project in your mind, but you're just afraid to be judged. So the first step that I believe you should start with is changing your surrounding. If you have an idea and you want to implement it in reality and there are people who are, I'm going to say your friends, who are laughing at you and making fun of you, then these people are not your friends. You see? These people are just want you to be a loser, okay? So the first step that I believe you should start with is changing your surrounding. Anyone who tell you that you cannot do it or anyone who tell you that this is crazy or, or grabbing you is someone that is not your friend, okay? You need to change that. The second step is to, uh, to spot a problem in our society, propose a solution, and volunteer. Volunteer in this solution. Do it for free in our, your society. Do it for free. You need to serve your society. And with time, you will gain the necessary knowledge and the necessary network to start your own business, okay? So um, this is it, guys. I'm just going to finish with the two keys of success that I believe, based on my experience, are two. The first one is commitment. And the second one is consistency. These two words are the key to success, the success of any project. Once you have a project and you start uh, giving it time and investing time and energy in this project, you need these two. You need to be committed to your project. You never stop. You have to be committed, okay? Even though you lose motivation, but you need to be committed. And the second thing, consistency. You need to do it on a regular, on a regular basis. You need to do it on a regular basis. If you guys manage to find a project, uh, find a problem, propose a solution, volunteer, and you're committed to this project and your consistency, then take my word, guys. Take my word. You're going to succeed for sure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was so great. Thank you so much. How was his speech? It was so good. It was so great. It's so great. Thank you so much. Can you just take the chair, please? Now, now it's your time. You're going to have a mic and you can ask him a question. If you have any curious question, you can ask him a question. But before that, I will start first. And you know, so if you have questions, you're going to get the mic. What is the mic of the audience? <laughs> so first of all, thank you so much for your speech. Yeah, uh, can you just take it? Yeah. My first thank question you. is that when you first started, you had some motivational speeches that you did. Why would you care about entrepreneurship 
and you already have studied political science because you studied political science and then you went to something else, you changed to French literature and then you are now with entrepreneurship. Why is this jumping? Yeah, okay, thank you so much, Mahmoud, for, for your question. So, um, first of all, um, you know, I, I feel that I'm lucky. I feel that I'm lucky because, um, you know, I, I had the chance to pass a lot of beautiful experiences in my life and uh, to learn a lot of things, to meet um, world leaders all over the world. I had the chance to travel, to meet people, to have a great education, and which is something that a lot of Algerians did not get, you see? So I felt that I'm, I'm some kind of responsible of sharing what I've learned. So uh, this is why I'm, I'm focusing now on entrepreneurship because I believe that entrepreneurship is all about serving your society. Mm. The money is not, is, not the, uh, uh, is not the goal, okay? If you guys are, are focusing on the money, then, then it's not a good start, okay? Don't focus on the money. The money is just a result, okay? Once you start a project, one, once you are motivated to serve your society and you invest, you invest time and energy in your project, uh, money is gonna come later as a result. So you don't have to put uh, money as, as a goal, okay? Money is not the goal, money is a result. The goal is to serve your society, the, the goal is to share what you have, the goal is to empower others and to inspire them. And at the end, you will, you will, you will succeed. So this is what I'm doing, I'm trying to share what I've learned and uh, hopefully um, I'm, I'm gonna see like a lot of people being inspired and starting their own project and making a positive impact in our society. That's perfect. Do you guys have some questions? You have a question? Wow. Uh, when you said um, we do stuff for our society that is free, do you mean the stuff that we can or the stuff that we have to? Okay, thank you so much, Mohammed, for, for being so brave. I, I really love that. Okay, so uh, yeah, that, that's a really good point, which is uh, what kind of, of project that we might um, start in our society. So um, I, what I want you guys to do is not spotting any problem, but problem who's related to your life, okay? Uh, something that you suffered from, okay? I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, one of the problems that I, that I used to face was speaking in front of a public. I mean, um, 10 years ago, uh, uh, I couldn't stand in front of a public. I just couldn't, like, uh, and now I'm speaking to you guys normally and uh, I'm comfortable and uh, I'm connected to you. So my problem was, was this fear and this anxiety of speaking in front of a public. And that's what I did. I, I proposed a solution which is creating a space uh, where people can practice public speaking, where, where they can manage their anxiety. And after, after years of doing it for free, years of doing it for free, helping people to manage their anxiety and train them to face the public and um, help them to overcome their fear, now I'm investing it and I started my own business and I'm making a lot of money just from this simple idea, just fear of speaking in front of a public. So Mohammed, for you, you just need to, um, you know, you're just in your daily life, try to spot any problem that you are facing, okay? You, maybe you were facing some difficulties and then you, you, you propose a solution. Okay, so in order to me to not have this problem, I'm gonna do this. And this solution, you share it with your, your, your other beloved citizens, your other beloved Algerian citizens, okay? And with time, you will gain uh, the necessary knowledge and the necessary, uh, the necessary network to invest in it, to start your own business, okay? So, so do something that really touch you guys, okay? Something that really hurts you or something or a problem that you're really facing because, you know, Algeria is a continent, it's, it's big. And the problems that we are facing here in Algiers are not the same problems that maybe we face in, uh, in I don't know, in Ghardaya or in another city. So every, every society, every environment has uh, its own problems. So all what you need to do is focus on that Propose a solution and invest in that solution. Perfect. Okay, any questions? Guys, any questions on it? Thank you so much. Okay, uh, so hello everyone. Uh, thank you, sir, for sharing uh, those informations. Uh, actually, I have two questions. Uh, the first one, uh, I'm really interested to know uh, about your uh, background, like your education or uh, your 
uh, professional uh, works. And the uh, second question is, uh, is there any like uh, books or leaders, entrepreneurs, who you, you recommend uh, that we can follow in order to get uh, more like experience or information? Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much, Taha. So first of all, uh, my name is Berkan Hussam. Um, I have a master's degree in uh, translation and uh, currently uh, master's international relations. Um, I have bachelor degree in uh, uh, business law and uh, other, uh, I studied languages also. I have a certificate from the uh, University of Spain, Valladolid, Spanish, and um, other minor, minor certificates. So this is my background. Oh. So uh, it has nothing to do, most of it has nothing to do with business, okay? But this, uh, this doesn't mean that you cannot start your own project, okay? You don't have to study economy or business or marketing or management in order to start a project, okay? There are a lot of successful entrepreneurs all over the world here in Algeria who started their own project and they don't, they, they, they have nothing to do with business, okay? So, um, so just another comment which is, oh, I said that, um, you know, you spot a problem, you propose a solution and you volunteer. Why did I say volunteer? You do it for free in your society, okay? Because you're not, uh, you're not, uh, you're not machine ready, but you don't have the necessary knowledge to start your own project. So what do you do? You volunteer, you do it for free, and then you are analyzing the feedback of the people. Is this solution the right solution? And then people are gonna give you feedback because you're doing it for free. People are gonna love you, gonna help you, gonna support you. And with time, you'll gain knowledge. You gain knowledge, you will gain feedbacks, and then your idea gonna develop. You will be developing your idea with time until you reach the, uh, the perfect idea, okay? Once it's perfect, it's well de developed, well designed, and you have the necessary knowledge to start the project, then you, you, you start. Uh, as for, for uh, people that I would recommend, um, actually, the people that I would recommend, a lot of people are gonna hate me after that. Hmm. Yeah, because why? Should I should I say some some names? Okay. okay. I don't think. It's... I mean Donald Trump, bro. Donald oh, wow. Trump. Um, I mean he's one of the. Uh, I mean, uh, let's not be emotional, okay? So for me, Donald Trump is one of the most successful entrepreneurs. Most of the one of the most successful. Um, uh, real estate, he's working yeah. the real estate, and, and his books, bro, if you read his books, yeah. uh, the man is, uh, is amazing. I mean, you just go Google Donald Trump books, there are a lot of books that you can read, and uh, he's amazing, like, you're gonna learn a lot of things. Uh, the second one I would recommend is Simon Sinek. Uh, oh, yeah. Simon Sinek is known, everybody knows Simon Sinek. Like, there is, start with, uh, start with a Y, Start with the why is an amazing book. There is uh, Why Leaders Eat Last by Simon Sinek too. And uh, the third book that I would recommend and I want every single Algerian to read is uh, Tim Ferriss. Tim Ferriss. Tim Ferriss is, uh, you know, one of the problems that we face in our, uh, that we have in our, in our country is the absence of mentorship. We don't have mentors. You know what are mentors? Mentors are people that can guide us, okay? As you said, I want examples, someone that I can look up to, you see? So in our country, we don't, we don't have mentors, we have problem mentors, and uh, this book is going to help you a lot. It's called The Tribe of Mentors. The Tribe of Mentors by Tim Ferriss. So uh, it's right, like a beautiful book. It's an amazing book that I believe that every single Algerian who can speak English needs to read. The Tribe of Mentors. You know what is a tribe? Shul Qabila. Qabila people. Ligid. So it's Tribe of Mentors by Tim Ferriss and it's an amazing book. Right. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks for your question. Does anybody here have a question? Yeah. Any questions? I see a lot of questions, but they can just come out. Come on. Just do it. Okay. We're done. Uh, one single question before we cut off, before we finish our session with you. Thank you so much. You shared a lot. Is that uh, a lot of the time, we saw you making motivational videos to people. Do you like feel that there is a feedback behind your motivational speeches? You mean feedback from, from from the people? Exactly, you make videos yeah, motivating so, people. Yeah. So, so why do I focus on motivation? Yeah. So, um, you know, let, let's be let's be uh, clear, guys, and let's be honest with each other. 
we live in a negative society. Our, our society is so negative. I mean, it's something that I, I, I don't like to say it all the time, but people are so negative. I mean, a lot of, a lot of uh, creative Algerians, a lot of, uh, let's start with, with talking about our generation. Our generation is so different. I say this all the time. Our generation is unique. Uh, most of our members of our generation are so smart, unique, and creative. And uh, because, because we live in, in the era of technology and communication, and this made us develop a mindset of creativity, mindset of diversity, mindset of accepting others, you see? But the, the, the problem that we're facing, that our surrounding are so negative. They, they, they don't let us show our creativeness. They don't That's let right. us show our beauty. Because as I said before, every single one of you has something to offer to our society. You have it. You just need to show it. You already have it, okay? But our surroundings are so negative. Every time, starting with our parents, going to our colleagues at school, going to our teachers, every single one of them is, is dragging us down. I mean, I mean, you cannot thrive in a society of negativeness, okay? Of negativity. You cannot thrive. So this is why I focus on motivating them, telling them that they are unique and they are creative and they are strong and smart. I focus on that because we need it. And I want, I mean, a lot of people are gonna say, Hussam, no, motivational speakers, uh, mot motivational speeches are scam and it's not good, it's just fake. Uh, I mean, I mean, it depends on how you see the world it, and it depends of, of, on the needs of our society. Now we need it, we need to motivate people. That's what we need. Maybe in the United States it's scam. People just use it to, 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 to make money. Right. But here in Algeria we need it. Like if you go to other villages, like I, I go a lot of time to small villages and people there are, are suffering. People there are suffering. And like, especially women. Women like, uh, if, if you go visit small villages, women are suffering. There are a lot of smart women, like they are genius. Right. And they're, they, they don't give them the chance to, to achieve their goals or, or maybe uh, give something to society. I mean, society is 50% men, 50% women. If you're just giving the chance to men to build a society, you're going to build health a society. Right. So we need to motivate them. We need to, um, to give them the chance to create a space for them, motivate them in order for them to share beauty, in order for them to, uh, to show creativity, to propose solutions. Because... We men and women are different. We, we don't have the same mindset. The, pro the solutions that I'm going to propose, the solutions that women are going to propose are not the same. Right. And maybe there are a lot of solutions who are being buried because of negativity and because of some archaic mindset. So, so this is what I'm focusing on motivation. We need it. And all the people who are saying that motivation is, is stupid and motivation is fake, then, bro, this is this... This is you, and this is what I believe. We need it in our society. That's right, that's right. Thank you so much. Do you guys have some questions again? Oh, wow, that was so quick. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Ahmad. Uh, you said that uh, here uh, okay. in Algeria we don't have uh, guns. But, uh, yeah. but uh, when we go to Malaysia, for example, the first minister said that uh, as a result of an uh, Algerian writer called Nathan Nabi, I just love my country. So. Thank you so much, yeah. But uh, did you know when, when Malik ibn Nabi started writing his books? When did he start writing his books? When? When was that? What year? Actually, I don't know. Like 50, uh, 50 years ago. At, back in the time, did we, did we know that he exists? Like why, why after 50 years, we, start, we started uh, hearing about Malik ibn Nabi? You know why? Because of the negativity of society that I was talking about. People, yeah. pe if you're succeeding, they will, not, uh, they will not give you the chance to show your success. And for Malik ibn Nabi, no one, no one cared about him back in the times. And he went to Egypt and went to Lebanon to write his books there. Because we cannot write books here. We can't do it here. But they did not give him the chance to, to show, to show his beauty, to show his, his intelligence. You see, the problem, uh, as I'm telling you, we have creativeness, we have great people, but we are not giving them the chance to shine. They are running, they are, they are like leaving the country and going abroad. And when I say mentors, guys, uh, when I say mentors, bro, I mean like thousands of mentors, not only one, okay? We need thousands because one mentor, like everybody gonna follow one mentor? 
we need mentors in all fields. For example, Malik Ibn Nabi in philosophy, and uh, he's, he's a thinker, and uh, yeah, we, we, can, we, can, we can consider him as a mentor in his field. What about other fields? We, we have hundreds of fields. We need mentors in every field, and this is what we're gonna do. Our, our generation gonna do that. You guys need to succeed, okay? This is what I'm telling you, you need to succeed. And you're gonna be the first wave of mentors. You need to face the challenges, you need to face the negativity, and you need to face these people that are fighting you in order for you not to succeed. We have to, we have to succeed. And we have to be the first mentors of the, the, uh, the, the generations that are gonna come after us. Because the generation that come, uh, came before us, I don't see any mentors, bro. I'm asking a lot of questions, no one is giving me answers. So it's our chance, it's now, it's now or never. It's now or never. I want you to succeed. And whenever someone from like uh, younger than you ask you one day a question about your field, I want you to answer him. That's what you have to do. What's your field? Uh, engineering. Engineering, yeah. Engineering. You need to be the best, bro. I mean, not, not the best, but at least one of the best. Like put it as a goal, okay? Yeah, I, hopefully I answered your question. Oh, so good. Thank you so much. I think um, the time is up. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, Mr. I mean, please clap your hands for Mr. Becker. Thank you.